Steph, thank you. And um, whilst I, uh, I am very proud of being the chair of the Health and Safety Executive, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Um, I'm here and I'm very pleased to be here because I, like most of you in this room, all of you in this room, I think care very much about process industries, uh, about the importance of chemistry and uh, innovation, because uh, I believe and always have believed as an engineer myself, that they're fundamental to our future prosperity and sustainability. And I know I'm preaching to the choir and that's going to be part of the message I want to give to you all today. Um, because when Nigel rang me just over a year ago and said, um, how do you fancy putting your name forward to be on the board of the high value manufacturing catapult? I jumped at the chance because although I left this industry sector almost a decade ago, um, it's a bit like they say you can take somebody out of something, but you can never take it out of somebody. And that's a bit how it feels for me. So I was delighted to have the opportunity to get involved with Catapult and particularly to champion the cause and of the process industries through CPI. It's been not just an opportunity, but it's been an absolute privilege for me to see what is going on in this sector and these process industries. To see the progress you've made since I was heavily involved in things like the Innovation and Growth Team over a decade ago and the Chemistry Leadership Council, which tried to kick a lot of these things off. And it's absolutely wonderful to see the progress that has been made in this industry. But it's also interesting to reflect on some of the things that I see that haven't changed very much. And there's a mix of the two. You've made some huge progress, but there are some things I really think need some attention. Anyone who's attended this conference today can't fail, I don't think, but to be impressed by the things that individual companies and particularly CB CPI at the center of all of that have achieved over the last decade. Polyphotonics, just one example of an absolutely brilliant technological innovation that will bring huge benefit to society, to individuals, reduce cost in the economy and the health service. And what's great about it and why it's such a great story to tell is because of that tangible product and, and it is a rounded story. Part of the problem this industry faces is that isn't always the case. Some of the other things we've heard about, it's like there's a magic ingredient there somewhere that makes an end product and people see the end product. And that's part of the challenge I think this industry faces in terms of explaining what it does and where it fits and that huge benefit that it brings to society. And so one of the things I think we're still not very good at is telling that story. Not to the people in this room, because we're pretty good at talking to ourselves. I spent 12 months as the president of ICME saying exactly that. We've got to stop talking to ourselves and find a way of telling the story of what we do and how good we are. And it doesn't come naturally to any of us in this room. So how are we going to do it? Well, I think we need some help. I had another experience recently where, uh, as part of my uh, involvement with the Royal Academy of Engineering, I got involved in a study with Sue, Ian and others looking at the full extent of the universe of engineering, how it's expanding, how it's changing, how much more we need interdisciplinary people, how much more the disciplines are merging, and, and clearly that's come through again today. Um, we also, as part of that exercise of looking at the universe of engineering, decided, and we've seen some examples here today, of um, engineers trying to come up with a definition of what it is we're doing. And don't we fall over ourselves when we do it. We got into some incredible language about, well, what we do is create artifacts. And then we talked about the appliance of science and knowledge to processes. And you stop and think, how are we going to tell this to people we want to inspire to join and become part of what we're doing? All of those young people that we need to come in to bridge that skills gap, 
all of those teachers that Trevor referred to earlier that we'd like to have here in this room. I'm sorry, guys, but it would have been unintelligible to most of them because we're good at talking to ourselves, but explaining it to others is not our strength. The universe of engineering eventually turned to the BBC and found a definition in the BBC archives of what engineers actually do. And it was remarkably simple. It said that engineers use science to create the world we live in. Full stop. End of the sentence. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no qualifications. It was incredibly simple. I think we need some of those people from the BBC to help us to explain what we do and what our contribution is to society and tell some of those exciting stories we've been hearing today to a much broader audience. Because I think when the world realises the value of what we've done, the achievements, the rewarding careers and jobs that we can offer to people, some of the problems we've been wrestling with today around getting people into that to fill that skills gap, attracting the funding. If we get better at telling our story, some of those problems, challenges, whatever word you want to use, will diminish. So, my challenge and my question to all of you is, how do we get better at coming together, not to talk to ourselves, not to get concerned about the number of different initiatives, but to use one voice from the people in this room to tell a different story to the people who as yet know nothing about what we've spent all day talking about. We talk about innovation as being technology translation. There's two aspects to translation in my view. One is translating research and development into commercial products, which is what we've been talking about today. But the other form of translation is about getting our message across, telling this exciting story to others. That, I think, is my contribution today to say, as someone who was, and in some places still is, part of this industry, I have found today quite literally inspiring. And I would like to see us making this much more widely known because it is an inspiring story, but only if we find the right language to tell it. Thank you.